head of quorum, all the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. That would be Miss. Uh, that would be Norman, who's hiding behind Nancy's name there. <laughs> I don't have a Zoom account. She does. <clears throat> so I sent over a, a brochure, a list of items that we wanted to put up to attract employees. Um, so why don't you back backtrack a bit, because the rest of the board isn't. Start start off with who you are and what you are. Norm Mogul, um, Domino's Hadley, 459 Russell Street. I'm the facilities supervisor. Um, we're trying to figure out how to attract employees to work. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no offense, sir. <laughs> Lots of luck. <laughs> well, we're trying everything we can, and we want to try to put up a, a banner or two, um, some H stakes for the the lawn, um, a flutter flag, whatever we can do. Um, UMass is kind of backed down from any type of solicitation, um, like uh, um, a mailing or anything like that. Um, and they're very hard to get a hold of or return calls. How, how big will these posters be? One is a five by three, and down is now hiring. Um, five by eight, which we're going to put on the building, affixed to the overhang, the blue overhang. One would be on the, um, I guess it would be westerly side, and one would be on the north side, on the front. And the flutter we probably put down by the road or just off of the parking lot. And the H sign's probably down in that little. I don't even know if you call it grass, but <laughs> it's a it's a separation between the sidewalk and and the parking lot. How long would you be having these things flutter? Um, probably when we open. Um, I'm not sure that they're not going to be lit, so they could be taken down after dark. Um, we probably were going to be taking that in and the H signs and the other banners would be affixed to the building. Would this be weeks or months or? Um, we would like to do it through the UMass year because the business drops off April, May-ish so that uh, by then we should have enough employees to carry us through till the, the next. By the UMass year, you mean through December or into next year? Into next year, May, possibly. Um, I don't know how many employees we can attract Okay. Well, if, if you don't get any people attracted in the first couple months, uh, you're kind of, as we say, up to Judah, maybe. <laughs> well, there's different semesters. So second semester yeah. starts in June. I, I, I don't know that I'd be in favor of giving you the right to put up this many signs for the next eight months, if you would. I would have no problem giving you the right to put up these signs for the next say through the end of the year and then you could come back to us in january and see how it's going how's that okay well can, can do we have that kind of an authority now to waive uh the sign regulation because certainly if he gets it then i can see a flood of people up and down a route nine asking for the same thing and we'll, we'll really be certain a lot getting... a lot uh, that's a good point, Joe, and that's kind of in a gray area because these could be considered. You could, I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, this is an this is an advertising for the business, and I've seen yeah. quite a few. Uh, I mean, a I lot of companies seen. are putting these signs up without coming to us or exactly. something like right. it. Um, you know, Mike's right. This isn't really an advertising sign for the business. It's an advertising sign for health, which is a predicament, I would say, the vast majority of businesses are in. And, you know, I mean, if we don't have the authority, I mean, the building inspector may have it. I don't but, think he does, too. You'd have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals in that. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. I, that, I, it, it, this is a this is a tough call. Mr. So Dwyer, temporary, what's your opinion? Temporary oh, signs are definitely okay, but there's a limited time for them. And I think that um, 
I'd say, you know, 45 days uh, and then come back and tell us how it's working. That's, that would be a good compromise. Okay. So 45 days from now would be the end of, so Thanksgiving? Or yeah, wait, yeah. Let's, let's see December the end of let's, let's do, Why don't we do December 1st because we got holidays in there. And uh, How long is it going to take for you to forget them up? Forget them up. Um, I have them now. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I have. I have. Let, let's say December first. Okay. Like that is a Domino's hiring sign, if you will. Okay. Okay. Our our first December meeting is Tuesday, December sixth. So uh, I would. What I would ask is that if. If you want to keep them up past that, if there's been any merit or if they've been of any help, come back to that meeting. And if you um, don't want to keep them up past that, if, it, if it's just either overachieving and you have more people than you can use or you're not getting anyone at all, uh, maybe you just take them down at the end of after Thanksgiving. Okay. I know I we've done this in the past and I didn't realize there was a meeting for it. I went in actually yesterday to pay the, the fee to do it. And she said, oh, it's got to go through the planning board before we can uh, approve something. I was like, oh, okay. Well, okay, we'll, vote, we'll vote on it tonight and you could go in tomorrow and get your uh, stuff. Okay, um, can I be emailed on the, on the findings or no? Yes, you can. What, okay. what is your email? Norman, N-O-R-M-A-N dot mogul, M-O-G-U-L at gmail dot com. M-O-C as in Charlie U-L? No, M-O-G as in George. G as in George, okay. U-L. Correct. Gotcha. I'll copy you on the email. Okay. Wait a minute, let us do the vote first. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make, right. make a motion to uh, to approve the signs on a temporary basis, uh, not to uh, exceed December 6, 2022 without further approval. Second. I was writing that down. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion I say aye as well. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, I'll copy you on the email, sir. Okay, thank you very much. You can get the uh, hiring sign down, Bill. Okay. Yep, finishing my, my little okay. notes there. Uh, so, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Mike Dagna was the next one in. I'm not sure if he's here for one of the public hearings. I am. Uh, I'm here for the 401 Russell Street. Okay, okay. we'll get okay. to that. Okay. Uh, and then Mr. K uh, Richard Kalen. I'm not sure. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, are you here for one of the hearings or do you have a question for the planning board? Oh, uh, I was just interested in the proceedings about the Howard Johnsons. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. We'll that. That'll be up in a minute or two. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Spank and Abel, are you here just here to listen in? He's here for the Howard Johnsons. Okay. Okay. Or perhaps the other one as well. All right. Yeah, I would think both of them probably. Okay. Um, let's see. I have no invoices to pay. Mr. Dwyer, do you have anything special to bring up? Uh, I don't think I have anything in particular at the moment. Um, no, I don't have anything, anything else administrative at the moment. Okay.
be sure I have another pad. I'm almost out. Uh -huh. I did uh, just today get a uh, first draft of the minutes that um, uh, Shyla is working on. She is the person sitting at the uh, in the Conservation Commission office, and she's also um, giving us some time. So uh, I haven't had a chance to go through them yet. I didn't. I just got it this afternoon. Okay. But uh, may have some more uh, good news in that department. Great. That would be good. Yeah, we, you're, you're starting from the from most recent of working backwards. Uh, what I uh, it's actually easier to work forwards. I found so okay. what I um, what I suggested she start with is from when uh, Mark joined the planning board. Okay. And so that's just like getting a couple of years caught up. And then depending on how well that works, then she can go back to uh, the, uh, when I just ran out of a time to do them uh, okay. and get them up through there. And then I can chip away at some of the real oldies. You know, okay. I, I looked through some of the minutes we had uh, a whole uh, a whole page one one page for it for the whole meeting <laughs> so those are the good old days yep, yep. okay uh, get close up to 6:45 we'll reopen the public hearing for the 401 Russell Street former hojos and I'll turn it over to the appropriate parties. Yes, good evening, uh, Mike Gagnon. Uh, for the record, with SLR International, I'm a principal civil engineer. Um, also with me this evening on the call is Kurt Shumway, uh, the project proponent um, from Amherst Development Associates. Um, so I think uh, what I would like to do is just basically cut to the chase and give you some updates. Um, first of all, I believe you should have received the peer re review letter um, from Berkshire Design Group, um, simply stating that we've addressed um, all of their technical peer review comments, uh, specifically with the stormwater uh, analysis. They had some uh, comments relative to analysis points and ensuring that there was consistency um, with the respective flow rates for, for pre versus post. Um, consequently, uh, that also required a, a revision to the grading um, at the site entrance drive. And I can, I can go through that um, in a moment. Uh, when I share my screen, I can share with everyone the the updated set of drawings and just kind of go through some of the some of the revisions um, that have occurred as a result of peer review, um, but also some of the changes that we've incorporated um, that that you requested uh, during your August uh, 16th hearing. Um, in addition, on um, this evening, we also uh, just received some comments um, from your file, fire chief. Um, I can kind of go through those in detail um, in terms of, um, you know, what, uh, what the appropriate actions would be. But I think the good news there is I think we can uh, accommodate um, all of the points um, that he has brought up uh, in, his, in his email correspondence. Um, and then the last thing, um, just a, we have a continued uh, hearing with the Conservation Commission um, next Tuesday, which is the 11th. Um, and, you know, they're, they're waiting to essentially close that hearing uh, pending uh, resolution or, or pending your actions um, with the planning board. So with that, um, what I can do is I can just share my screen, if I may. Go ahead. Okay, you should see a set of drawings. So this is the latest set of drawings, um, which you've all seen before. And like I said, I will just walk through um, some of the changes. Again, the existing conditions plan, 
Uh, this plan essentially just shows the removals of the existing structures, pavements, et cetera. Um, this is our site layout uh, plan, which, which basically also incorporates the proposed plantings uh, for the site. And one of the things that I would like to zoom in here is we've updated um, the tree schedule here. I believe one of the comments um, that you raised during the previous meeting was the caliper size of some of the trees seemed somewhat aggressive. Uh, based upon you know what was available from nursery stock and what have you, so um, our landscape architects took a look at that. We've pared down those those calipers accordingly. So hopefully um, those those look a lot more reasonable to you. Um, other than that, not really any other noteworthy changes to this plan. Uh, this is our grading and utilities plan um, again. Uh, one of the things that we did do is up here at the main entrance drive, which I'll show in a minute, we've got a uh, um, inset in the details um, that shows the grading treatment at the driveway so that we contain all of the site runoff um, on the site and thus not prevent um, any additional flows um, of runoff uh, to Russell Street, which was one of the comments um, that uh, that Berkshire Design had. Uh, this is our sedimentation and erosion control. No noteworthy changes here either. Um, just drilling into, hang on, just wanna, yep, just wanna make sure I didn't miss a sheet. Uh, sedimentation and erosion control details, no changes there. Um, some of our pavement and sign details. And again, I'm going through these quickly. So, you know, please stop me if uh, you got any specific questions that you may have. Um, but what I'd like to do, so what we added um, on sheet SD4 um, is we did some micrograding essentially at the entrance to essentially demonstrate that all of the runoff um, from the site will um, be managed by a trench drain um, that will be located under the sidewalk here and then flow into a stormwater management basin one, which is located across the front of the building. So essentially we created a little bit of a high point um, here at the entrance drive so that all of the gutter flow uh, is contained within Russell Street and thus the, the runoff from the site um, is, is managed uh, accordingly as well. Here's a detail of what that trench drain looks like. It essentially is gonna be a gutter inlet uh, through the uh, side of the sidewalk uh, with a piece of plating that, uh, that will be constructed over, um, over that trench. This detail shows the, the site lighting um, we've, we've been working with our site lighting vendor who we've used on many projects. Um, this, is, this is the site light fixture um, that will be provided um, on, on the site. It's a 15 foot high um, pole with, with a fixture. Uh, essentially, it's gonna be an LED uh, fixture um, that will be mounted. And these are the typical uh, photometric patterns um, from uh, or light distribution um, from the fixture so that essentially any light wash uh, will be minimized um, to adjacent areas. So those are, those are some of the highlights uh, in terms of the revisions um, to the site plans. Um, any questions or comments? Just curious, I, I saw the first floor level, they, there was a number there, 166. What what was that? Uh, back up to one more. Yeah, this is the finish floor, first finish floor elevation. What's that above sea level? Yeah. <clears throat> well, based on uh, these are the these are the grades uh, throughout the remaining. So that you know the floor elevation is going to be okay. about about eight inches higher um, than the parking lot grades. Yeah, it's gotta be above sea level. 
it's is, probably is that a yeah. sea level elevation or a relative elevation to the it's property? An, no, it's mean, above sea level. This is, is uh, NGVD. Wow. Um, yes, it's based on Massachusetts uh, vertical da datum. So the Northampton Airport's 128 or 129 feet. Right. Well, the center of the uh, Hopkins is right around 120. Well, the parking lot at Hopkins is right around 127 feet. Well, the reason I'm asking is that uh, this is in 1938. Allegedly, Route 9 had some water going over it. Was that would that be reasonable or is that just speculation? Well, we did check, you know, as part of our due diligence uh, for this project, one of the things that we look at obviously is uh, FEMA mapping with respect to the 100 year flood zone. Um, and that doesn't occur uh, on this particular site in the building. In other words, there's no infringement of the 100 year flood uh, within the site area. Joe, you're correct though. Joe, this is Kurt. You, you are correct. It was a flood back then, but uh, the 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 flood level from the river is was stated before. It's in the mid one twenties, something like that. So we're we're we, we're okay here. Yeah, I, I I realize that. Plus the uh, the FEMA regulations now have downgraded the one thirty eight flood because of the flood control dams uh, further north. So I was just wondering more speculation than uh, questioning. So Mike, have you sent us this final set of plans? I believe we have with our response uh, back to Berkshire Design. If not, I can provide them to you. Uh, yeah, if you could just uh, send a, a, a clean email. I sometimes do not check all the attachments when, it's, uh, when we're just being copied on something going through to someone else. Okay. So if I could just get a, a, a complete set, uh, I'll, I'll go back through my, my stuff, but it's always easier to have, have a definitive email from you saying that it, this is the final. Gotcha. Work. Be glad to do so. And I can send you like, for example, the final engineering report as well, uh, which is all the, the uh, updated stormwater computations that have been addressed as a, as like a result the, uh... of your review. I like the micrograding that was uh, at the northeast corner. So that's basically covering what would be in that little parking area at the entrance. Yeah, so that that if you see this note here um, basically refers to that. Um, so it's really just a blow up of this area. Um, let me just jump to that. So this is. This is what that looks like. And the chances of that overflowing is this, this is higher than the, uh, the invert out on the other side of that water quality swale or? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. No, yeah. I, think, I think that's the, that's a good solution. Other, other questions? Signage, Mr. Shema, you were planning on coming back to us with a signage. We're not going to put the signage at this point because you don't know who's going to be here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were asking me about signage. Yeah, well, I think we discussed once we get a tenant, depending on what that tenant needs are, whether it's they take the whole building or we have multiple tenants. Yeah, I think that's what we agreed to, yeah. Okay. Is that I how you recall? Even some of the features of the building might change a little bit too from what you said last time. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. All right. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Dwyer. Or I will uh, make a motion to, uh, oh, uh, before we do that, um, I know that there's back and forth with Chief Spank Nabel on this. Are oh. we? Mike, are you okay? Yes. So essentially, um, one of the things relative to accommodating the ladder truck 
um, that the chief provided. We actually ran um, a large uh, WB-50 truck uh, into the site uh, to be able to get to this loading area. Um, what I did offer, and I, I believe I copied you in on the on the email that I replied back to the, him, is um, we will run his ladder truck um, through the site to demonstrate that the interior radiuses of the island should you know should accommodate his vehicle as well, which is uh, which is actually smaller. Um, or has you know smaller turning radiuses than a WB50, but um, we can certainly do that to demonstrate that um, there's you know that there's clear access within the site. Um, the other questions that he had was you know he um, he got into some specific questions about um, uh, like Siamese connections and building connections, and I think those really have yet to be determined and you know we can work those things out um, once we um, once Kirk gets a uh, MEP on board um, with the final architectural drawings um, because they're going to have to demonstrate um, that they comply with the uh, NFPA fire code uh, with respect to you know flows that are going to be re required for the sprinkler service and what have you um, <clears throat> And then, you know, uh, just some of his other questions, you know, maintaining a, a minimum 20, 20 foot wide uh, aisle width. Um, we've accommodated that all of our aisle widths uh, in, inside of the, uh, the site are uh, 24 feet. Um, you know, that would include the driveways uh, between the parking spaces, the main driveway coming in here is 24. Um, the other question was, you know, wanted to ensure that the access to the adjacent staple site uh, was going to be maintained. And as you know, um, we are accommodating that um, as well. So, um, you know, that that's kind of my quick response um, to some of his comments. And, you know, like I said, we can we can share uh, with you that that uh, turning template. Uh, once it becomes available, uh, which we should be able to do in the next couple of days. I don't see a dimension on your east-west um, aisle that goes right along the south face of the building. Yeah, is there a dimension there? That's, I mean, I I trust you that it's twenty-four. I just don't see it anywhere. Yeah, I could actually tell you what it is. Um, Well, that's okay. I just think it would be good if you added that on the drawing so that it's there for everyone to. Yeah, we can we can add that dimension so we, that you know that's because that's the, probably the most important feet. aisle. Right. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have to we have to provide a minimum of twenty four feet wide. Yeah. You know, within the interior parking aisle. So, um, this is twenty four, but we can add that dimension as well. That would be good. Just out of curiosity, I mean, WD fifty means nothing to me. What? How big is a WD fifty vehicle? That's a fifty. That's that's basically a tractor uh, trailer combination. It's basically a fifty foot long trailer. Oh, so it's not it, a 50, that's a fifty foot, not a fifty three. Then that's what that means. Right. Okay. And aren't the straight bodies actually have a a worse turning radius? That's than correct. A actually, trailer? the fire chief's on the meeting right now, Mr. Gagnon. So yes, our if you could take a look at it because our turning radius is not the same as a um, the truck that you're specifying, but I'm sure I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. Um, the only other question that I had was the distance off of the driveway to the building and what your total building height is going to be, because we you know we have a 75 foot ladder. That's it right now. So we just wanted to make sure that we have access to the. Not sure what what the height is. Yeah, we the the maximum building height. Um has to comply we actually may have it right here on the drawings 42 i thought 42 feet max yep yeah. that's that's the top that's very the max height of there's no parapet no nothing above that correct that's the max height that's the maximum height yeah okay. and that's that's per the uh the zoning regulations 
The only reason why I had mentioned the fire department connection is that you're kind of limited on the front elevation because it's all plantings and grass. And right. I mean, we can work on that. It's just we might have to adjust some of your your parking spaces, and that's why I wanted to make sure you were aware of it for you know clear access to that connection. That was the only reason why I brought that up. We're certainly amenable to moving it to a different location on the building, though. Sure. Okay. Okay. Anything else from anybody? All right. Okay. So I will uh, make a motion to approve um, based on the following findings. Project satisfies the general purposes of the bylaw, not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Intended uses are not prohibited by the bylaw and are permitted thereby. Work will be uh, conducted in accordance with the following plans. And what I'll do here is just itemize the uh, plan list from the peer review letter. Uh, copies of the site plan have been distributed as provided. Um, proposal satisfies site plan review criteria. Um, I don't believe any waivers were requested. Um, I add the uh, design feature, the uh, supplementary conditions, design features, including but not limited to landscaping, specifically including tree caliper, are considered to be an integral part of the approval and um, uh, be considered a violation of the time of the terms of site plan approval if any changes are made without prior approval. Uh, no sign deal detail has been provided. Um, the obligation of future tenants or management accommodating future tenants. Um, landscaping installed, maintained or replaced per the plan. Uh, our landscape shall be verified by the planning board or its representative prior to issuance of a permanent occupancy certificate. Uh, any outdoor lighting fixture uh, shall be shielded so it does not produce a strong direct light beyond the property boundaries. No storage trailers, uh, shipping containers, temporary or permanent structures, or any other facilities not uh, depicted on the approved site plans are not allowed. This approval uh, does not excuse the project from compliance with any other provisions of the Hadley zoning bylaw not specifically addressed herein. So this is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including um, Inspection Services, Public Safety, Department of Public Works, Board of Health, Water Commissioners, and state agencies. Any project uh, changes directed by other boards must be approved by the Planning Board. Uh, prior to application for permits, applicant will participate in the pre-construction uh, conference, the project's coordinating group through the Office of the Building Commissioner. Uh, one set of approved site plans shall be maintained on site during construction for the exclusive use of the zoning enforcement officer. Project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant on behalf of the planning board. Uh, certificate of compliance issued by the consultant will be required before issuance of a permanent CO. You'll maintain a minimum six inch depth of topsoil and all unpaved surfaces in order to retain irrigation. Required freight yard setbacks will be identified prior to construction with permanent readily visible monumentation so that any encroachment by structures or parked vehicles uh, can be avoided. And the approval should not become effective until the notice of this, uh, uh, till the applicant's engineer certifies that the conditions set forth herein are noted. Uh, and incorporate into the site plan and the original is signed by the planning board uh, chair or clerk and copies of the signed original are filed with the planning board and the building inspector. That's it. Bill, can we add a clause requiring them to come back when they finalize their building exterior elevations? Oh yeah, and signage. Well, signage is in no sign deal detail has been provided. Uh, right. and it'll be up to it'll be a future. And um, I think we, we've covered it. The design features, including but not limited to landscaping, 
drainage design, exterior colors, roof lines, doors and windows are considered to be an integral part of the approved design and any deviation from the plans as presented and approved will be considered a violation unless the changes are approved beforehand. Okay. All right, so that covers us. I would think yes, so. That, that if, they, if they decide they want to use a different color brick, they have to come back and uh, show us the color. And no offense to Mr. Sunway, I'm, you know, I, I have high degree of confidence that he would not do something that we wouldn't agree with, but we can't be capricious. You know, we have to treat him as we would treat everyone else. Sure. Okay. Any other comment? That is the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second. Okay, motion a second. Any other discussions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night. Good. Good Any job. idea when you might start construction, Kurt? Got to get a tenant for demolition. We have to get a tenant first. No, yeah, tenant. Okay. Ah, details. Good. <laughs> that that gives you an idea. Don't don't, don't try to watch the paint dry. <laughs> it's a tough it's a tough environment right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll kick somebody out of Atwood, and I know somebody that would take space in Atwood. <laughs> oh yeah. It's an in joke. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's all leased up over there, though. We've got another yeah. building about 70 something thousand. So, you want to take half that? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Thank you. Good Thank night. you so much. Thank you, Mr. Shumway. This looks very nice. We look forward to this uh, improvement. Good job, Mike Gagnon, too. Yes. Good job. Yes. Thank yep. you. Thank yep. you so much. Mr. Squire, reopen the public hearing for <clears throat> 13 Russell Street. Yes, good evening, folks. Um, so yeah, just for the record, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of Triangle Properties, LLC, um, looking at 13 Russell Street. Um, and if I can share my screen. Um, so again, just real quickly, this was, um, this is the existing site um, at the corner of, of Russell Route 9 and, and Bay Road. It's a small triangular parcel here. Um, what we had looked at and talked about at the last hearing was this plan here, which provided an entrance off of Route 9, circled through and exited onto Bay Road. Um, there were some concerns and comments about stacking um, out onto Route 9 in addition to some other comments. And so um, I will um, show you this plan, which was circulated last week, which looks at adding an additional curb cut on Bay Road and removes that westernmost curb cut um, that we had shown previously. We are trying to retain the, uh, the other curb cut on Route 9 for emergency access. Um, it does, you know, to be able to get uh, an emergency vehicle in and around the site, as you can appreciate, is, is rather challenging given the small nature of the site. So we're leaving this one open. And the idea is that the space between, you know, what we really need for, I can, I can zoom in here a little bit, um, in this 22 foot width, this area would be um, would be proposed as like a, a turf paved unit, you know, something that is drivable, but looks like, you know, looks like the rest of the turf around it um, so that it could facilitate emergency access or vehicle access if needed to get by the building and, and through the site. It would certainly not be, a, you know, a, a, an entrance or exit that would be used on, a, you know, on an everyday basis. Um, and so the, the idea is that this would be a one-way entrance on, on this end. They would circulate in through the site and, and exit back out onto, onto Bay Road in this location, still providing um, access through here to get to these parking spaces. Um, anybody in these spaces would back out and then also exit out on Bay Road. We did look at um, a couple of other locations to, to put this curb cut or the entrance and, and configure stacking. And so just to give you a little bit of the geometry background that, um, that complicated things a bit. One, there's a utility pole basically right where my cursor is right now. Um, so that you know, eliminated you know, access, at least in that central location. Um, 
the other complication was, you know, one trying to bring cars in, in, in here, passing by vehicles that are backing up and then trying to make this, this turn here, um, was, was pretty difficult, particularly with a, you know, with the larger SUVs. So you lost a bunch of the site, you know, that, that, that is currently available, um, you know, down at this, at this end of the, of the triangle, if you will. Um, but what did work was, was this location that allows cars to come in and, and exit out, you know, very simply and, and preserves emergency access. Um, How many feet off of Route 9 is the new curb cut coming in there? Oh, let's see. That's a good question. Um, and what's the speed limit coming off of uh, the bridge at that point? I just, do people yeah. have time to slow down? That's my question. Sure. No, it's a, a legitimate question, and I, I don't know specifically the answer to that. I try to look that up quickly, but I don't know offhand. Yeah. And then there were a couple of other questions, comments um, at the last hearing. Uh, one was, um, is there a proposed propane tank that will be part of this, this building? The answer is no. Everything will be electric. There's, there's very little need for... Um, you know, for propane or, or any of those types of, of um, utilities. Uh, emergency access, again, just we, we are leaving this opening here to allow, you know, an emergency vehicle to get, get by and pass the building and through the site easily, but it's not intended to be a, uh, you know, a, a serviceable um, a service entrance, if you will. Um, and then lastly, parking, there was um, just clarification on the parking requirements and the need for TDR. So the building square footage, just the building itself is 510 square feet. They are showing storage on the second floor. I don't know whether all of that, I think some of that is, is you know, dormered, uh, you know, Eve space. So it may or may not be usable, but regardless, um, if we consider two, uh, two floors, um, the stairs, the exterior stairs, which occupy about 85 square feet, and then the deck, the exterior deck, which is an additional 186 square feet. There's 1,291 square feet, uh, gross square feet that we need to um, provide parking for, um, or two times that. So we need to provide 2,582 uh, square feet of parking. And so in this area here, and this area here, there is 2,290 square feet. Um, you know, understanding that this is primarily a drive-through establishment, but nevertheless, we're short 292 square feet of parking. So if there's a need for TDR um, for, for that square footage, then um, that, would be, that would be the amount. Um, and I think that wraps up my notes, at least from the last meeting, unless there was anything I missed. But happy to entertain any other questions or comments. How many square feet of parking are you actually providing? 2,290. Okay. And so we don't know how quickly cars are gonna be able to slow down as they come off of the bridge. You got you got maybe you got maybe thirty yards to to slow down there, okay? Although it's better than Route Nine. Yeah, it's better than Route Nine, but you get my drift. People come flying off of uh, the bridge, and mm -hmm. I mean, what one of the goals, or at least one of the things that we heard, is try to increase the the stacking length, which this does. Um, you know, I certainly don't dismiss the concerns. It's you know. It's certainly a valid concern. Um, again, we're, we're pretty challenged with the geometry and configuration of this site, obviously. Yeah, you know. How, how wide is the paved portion of Old Bay Road at that location? Um, I would have to guesstimate it's probably 18 feet, this it's, section here. It's it's probably a little bit wider because there used to yeah. be two, two, uh, you know, two lanes. Two lanes. Right. It's only one way. How much of the existing gas station building are you keeping? Just the foundations or just the slab? Yes, exactly. 
And if you built new, what kind of, uh, with the setbacks, what kind of space do you have? Not much at all. <laughs> that's, that's what I suspected. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's obviously the, one of the big constraints or, you know, challenges with this site is, is um, trying to, you know, trying to realize some value in it and, and given the, the obvious constraints. So, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, we make bad investments. I've certainly made a few over my life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know that rumor had it, had it that there was an offer uh, for this property from the pride people and, and it was declined. Uh, so we're really trying to accommodate you here, but my goodness. To, to follow up on Jim's question, Jim, you never did complete the, uh, your thought that, so 2,990 square feet of parking is available from what was the total and what will be the ultimate cost for the TDR? Is that what you were getting at? Well, I mean, if they got to do TDR, they got to buy an acre of farmland. Yes. Because we don't sell it in pieces. But that, but they, there he could contribute to the uh, the preservation of the farmland like we've traditionally done well, in the past. The, the the advertisement included a TDR. Okay, I, so they got to buy an acre of TDR. Yeah, I just like to clarify that I don't. I mean that at least the advertisement wasn't something that we had put in the in the application we weren't anticipating having to do tcr tdr yeah. so i think that was something that was put in by the by the town that's um, correct because when i looked at the property it didn't look like you were meeting the the, the you didn't look like you had enough parking because we thought the you have the two-story building so i said well to cover ourselves i'll include the tdr if you don't need it no harm no foul but if you need it it's been advertised as part of a tdr so it's roughly ten thousand dollars that'll cost them for that acre, right? Yeah. So they're either going to have to reduce the size of the building, come up with more parking, or contribute to TDR. It'll be their choice. So I don't know if you want to make that decision tonight, Mr. Squire, or do you want to go back and think about it? I mean, we can certainly show more parking. Um, you know, we have we have some space to do it. I don't, you know, I I, I guess in the in the name of uh, you know sort of sustainability and appropriate use of the site, it doesn't seem like it would be a very useful thing to do on this site. But we can certainly expand well, parking. Okay. Not we don't. Now. Remember, you don't need to actually pave it but you right. need to provide viable space that could be called future parking or reserved or, or whatever we, 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 we've called it, but you need to provide that space and not include it. And it could be green space for the time being, if you don't yeah. think you need it, but it needs to be delineated on the drawing, on the drawing and usable somewhere. Sure. sure. So I think we can probably provide that on, on site. That shouldn't be a, a, a tall lift. I mean, you're 300 and what, 370 feet shut shy or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, lighting? We are showing one pole light with two heads in the center island location right here. Um, are we maybe. looking at the, at the right screen? I'm seeing the L3. So he's got the whole. Yeah, I was trying to find the um, the detail of it. Ooh, I'm sorry. So this this is the fixture here, but it's a you know a downlit okay, LED yeah. fixture. Right. The, the, the typical shoebox type spike lighting. Right. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> now with the alteration of the new driveway. Uh, I've noticed that the detention pond, is that going to be eliminated? Well, the, the one in question, I think, was this one on the town yeah. property primarily. So that would go away, yes. So, so that, these, these, uh, these two internal ones would remain, as would this larger you know, depression on the east side. And again, we're, just, we're, we're essentially providing curb openings 
to allow water to collect in these areas, but they're not true detention basins. We really don't have the ability to, to drain these beyond you know, infiltrating. So what will happen to the water? Well, it will infiltrate. I mean, we've got the soils are decent enough where it will infiltrate. Um, but they're not, you know, they're, they're not designed or engineered per se as a, as a detention basin. It's, okay. it's to try to encourage infiltration on site and manage as much as we can on site. But again, we're, we're very limited in terms of what we can do. So we've tried to direct stormwater, you okay. know. Could, I mean, yeah, I realize it could. Do you have the, how do I say this? Do you have the updated drawing? I mean, you're showing the old drawing with the new, right. with the new pond, you're trying to explain it. You have a yeah. drawing that shows what's going to be constructed. Well, I, I parking. Uh, yes, no, again, I, um, this plan here is, is the one plan that shows, you know, the revisions. We didn't regrade this, you know, this detention area stays the same. Everything else stays the same on the site, except for the loss of that rain garden and this curb entrance. Everything I'm, else. Is, I'm seeing LC. I, I, I understand that. Oh, I'm sorry. A okay. Drawing that shows what's going to be constructed besides just the parking. This so one here. Yes. That's the only one you had. You know, that doesn't show any of the of the drainage areas or the or the retaining areas, whatever you want to call them. Right, right. Because I again, I it was it seemed like there was some discussion to be had about this curb cut location, and the the one thing that the only thing that changes is this area here. Everything else, okay. everything else stays the same. So we can update all of that if this that, seems that would be like fine. A that would be great. Just to, just so we can see it in one drawing. I mean, I understand you want to get the opinion of how the curb cut works before you go any further. Right. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Understandable. So if somebody is coming, I think the speed limit there is 35 miles an hour and we figure you got 30 yards to slow down. Is that possible? Going 35 miles an hour, 30 yards to slow down and take a left. It is one way, right? Mm -hmm. One way. Right. Well, and it's, a, it's, a, it's wide enough for a two lane road. So if the if they there's going to be some sign, I'm assuming there's going to be some signage. I mean, they had the welcome sign, probably. Um, first of all, I don't think it's needed because there's a Hadley welcome sign across the street. Right. So they could put some kind of a sign that says on their property, right in the corner there, and you know, about mm -hmm. the coffee station. Um, people are going to know it's there. They're going to take the right onto Bay Road and they're going to have to know after they've gone this way a couple of times that they got to slow yeah. up. The driver okay. is going to be right there. Yeah, it's tough because you really don't have any. We can't even let you have a directional sign mm -hmm. on town property, right? So, um, Jeff, you're can you make? Yeah, go ahead, Bill. You're just going to have to rely on building signage and uh, mm -hmm. I guess whatever you can paint on. Uh, We'll accept paint as uh, on town property as directional, I guess. <laughs> Jeff, could you make the entrance, uh, could you bend it toward the west so it's, and bend your exit toward the east? Because right now they're 90 degrees and it's a one-way street. So that's going to cause excessive slowing to make that turn. I'm just wondering if you could make that more of a sweep, right, to enter. This, sure. Which, I mean, this. I think this radius could certainly be opened up. I, my only concern would be making this too easy for cars to get into that they would come in at a you know too high a speed if that's the case. Yeah. You're, trying, just, you're trying to slow them down, okay? okay. Yeah, but I mean, I we, we could certainly open this up a little bit. I would maybe open up the exit because if they're coming out and people are coming off of Route Nine, they might want to be able to, you know hit the gas a bit as they're pulling out instead of having to make a hard left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see you're, you know, I'm okay with the slowing them down entering the site, although that is, as Mike said, it's a bit of a hazard, but, you know, again, the rules of the road are you don't go any faster than the guy ahead of you, and if his brakes go on, you, you slow down, so. Yeah. That's fine. I, I, I drive this way home, you know, from from work every night, and have you know paid attention to this location and just how 
you know, how fast cars do go down this road and the width of that, that, you know, that paved section. And, you know, there's certainly nights where, you know, cars are zipping along. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's, uh, you can appreciate the concern about the speed, but I also have noticed that there is sufficient width there to pass. And so I think, you know, the hope would be that people, if, if you have to, slow down and there's speeding cars behind you that you would move over to the left side and you know enter the site oh. i think mark dunn's suggestions to uh, both the entrance and the exit make a little gentler mm -hmm. curve there and yeah. that's a good suggestion mark yep so i did ask um if the traffic study could say something about stacking. Um, I don't think you've touched on that. I, I looked at the traffic study. It basically, it says, yeah, we're going to harvest the through traffic, mm -hmm. but it didn't specifically talk about the stacking issue. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, I did speak to somebody over there and they weren't entirely sure how to address the comment other than saying that there's, you know, room for X number of cars of stacking, um, the ability to stack X number of cars on the site. And, um, you know, beyond that, it would be, you know, it could be potentially hazardous in, in the roadway, depending on, you know, how those cars, would, but there's no, there's no um, ITE standard, if you will, as to a stacking length or a stacking distance or a certain number of cars. So it's hard for them to reference, you know, typically in those, in those traffic reports, they're they're based on you know data from you know established um, established locations, and there isn't any of that for stacking necessarily. There might be for particular businesses or chains, but given that this is an independent you know coffee shop, um, that's not a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks. Uh, it, it's really hard to gather any information about it. So. We did reach out and, you know, I can, I can reach out again if there's more specific, you know, questions, but it well, seemed like th it was this is more a, a kind of a rush hour question, you know, in the morning, yep. uh, 730 to nine, that's when you've got people going to work over the bridge and wanting a cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. Sure. I think. And I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, Mike. I guess all I'm yeah, saying is that yeah. you know, their report is going to say you can fit X number of cars and, you know, sure, there's no standard to, to say that that's enough or not enough. So it's, I can appreciate their, you know, their predicament. Yeah. Wait, is this in a floodplain? Uh, yes, it is. Mr. Snake and Abel, do you have any questions? I do. Uh, I just had a question in regards to, uh, are you just anticipating eastbound traffic? Uh, is there actually a left turn allowed heading westbound to go onto Bay Road? Uh, left turn. Mm, off of yeah. Russell Street. So you're only anticipating eastbound traffic now that you're closing off of the, uh, the Russell yeah. Street side? Correct. They'd have to go up and go around the rotary and come back over the bridge. <laughs> right. There is a turning lane, a left turn lane at the marina. And uh, oh. there is uh, uh, someone who really wanted that particular cup <laughs> of coffee <laughs> could uh, turn across traffic at the marina, get back onto Route 9 westbound, uh, eastbound, and uh, come down here and then go through the light and get back on, but. Just know we have a pretty serious issue with people taking a left turn onto uh, cross path off of Route 9, even okay. though there's a, you know, a no left turn there. So I was just, just wondering about that. Um, do you have any different options for that access, that access way? I mean, do you, I mean, we're open to other options for that. If that's, if there's something different you'd want to do, I don't know if, if there's any rules under planning for uh, you're talking about using some sort of a gravel or something like that. You're talking here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Would you be labeling that as emergency access only, or were you planning yes. on putting a couple of bollards up or. 
I think I think the talk was either you know signage noting emergency access and or you know some temporary planters or something, um, you know something definitely not not permanent. Um, the bollards, I guess there was concern that those would be too too permanent. Um, yeah. We did do that at the senior center with a breakaway chain. So if that's something you're yep. interested in, and we also yep. did it at the Chinese immersion school for sure. our second access. So if you I mean, if there's no if there's no issues on the planning board side, we can certainly work with you on that. Yes, okay. yeah, those those are fine, Mike. I always take us up to something along that. Even we have the the temporary uh, over on Grand Oak. There's an emergency access with the with a chain across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the plastic chain, and that's also between the Legion and the senior. <laughs> right. Correct. Yep. So, Chief, yeah. how about the uh, how about the two Bay Road entrances? Uh, I see that you you have twenty two foot access from Route Nine, but it's only twelve feet and fourteen feet respectively uh, off of Bay Road. We were talking about uh, the requirement being for a wider access on the prior project, weren't we? Correct. Yeah, your fire lanes. We would have to have a discussion with the. Um, yeah, it's under NFPA, it is required to be a minimum of 20 feet. So, I mean, we'd have to have a discussion on that. Um, obviously, it's such a limited site, but I mean, we do, we have to, it's it's a case by case basis. We can, we can amend it. Uh, but technically, I kind of agreed with um, what Mark Dunn said about opening up that, uh, that first entry there making a bit of, you know, a bigger swill, because if we did have to come around with our ladder truck or open both a little bit more, um, but we could work, we can work with you to see what, as long as we have one access way in there with that mm -hmm. clear, you know, so that we can actually put our outriggers out on our ladder truck if we have to extend it. And so our access off of route nine, if you have your 20 foot there minimum, and then in front of the building, that would, in my opinion, would be sufficient. But you don't have 20 feet in front of the building, do you? I, I don't know. I haven't. I actually haven't. I can't. I can't see it from. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, there's only about 12 feet here. I mean, yeah, then keep in mind this building is only 19 feet tall. Is the it's a pretty pretty small building. Correct. Yeah, but yeah. Part of it is they they respond with what they have available and staff, not what mm -hmm. will fit on the site necessarily. Sure. No, understood. You know, back to Bill Dwyer's point, uh, the the right turn uh, into Aquavita, is there any way of remarking Route 9 to some way accommodate slower traffic getting to the right so there won't be any jockeying for position going from, you know, from the center of the highway trying to cut back and get a cup of coffee? Uh, is that at all possible? I know that was recommended by someone from uh, Balthazar construction crew. So uh, what's that show? Like a suicide lane? Well, somehow, you know, right turn lane, stay to the right or something mm -hmm. and extend. I'm not sure if, how it could be done, but uh, to guide the people more to the right rather than having somebody in the center lane try to shoot over and just the thought. Um, but, but I'm not sure I followed. Were you talking about eastbound or westbound? Uh, if you're coming over the bridge yep. and, and uh, there, there's two lanes coming over the bridge. Oh, and right. Oh, I see what, what you mean. As you come past the in. marina, right yeah. lane, you know, right turn from right lane only. Not yeah. that the right lane has to be a right turn, but right. Yeah, something like that. And you could do mm -hmm. some markings to make it a little bit safer to try to alleviate Mike's concerns and as well as Bill's. But mm -hmm. overall, I think, Jeff, you've addressed a lot of our concerns you know the certainly the stacking on route nine is is one sure. and uh it's a tough site there's no question about it and uh you know if somebody's coming too fast i don't know if that's a significant enough of a concern to deny this whole project so uh well i mean if somebody's speeding 
That's their we're, problem. We're, we're, we're hard pressed to deny something because somebody's an idiot. Well, I'm not saying somebody's speeding. They're going to speed limit and they got 30 yards to slow down, to take a left. Well, that's why we're suggesting some kind of marking to stay on the right. Yeah. And there, it's going to be too oh, late. Mm. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I'll try the coffee. Josie has never had a cup of coffee in his life, but I'll try it. <laughs> I'm just concerned about the, I mean, I think we've done the best we can on the vehicle circulation, but if this is in a floodplain. Mm -hmm. How much do we let go of that because it's grandfathered? That, that's a conservation question, not ours. Okay, okay. So remind that's me, good Jeff, point, Mark. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with you, Mark, and that's a good point, but that's a conservation issue. Okay. Remind us, Jeff, where do you stand with conservation on this? So this was a classic chicken and the egg. They were waiting to get some feedback from you before they made their final decision. We are, you know, we do have an active permit in front of them. Um, we've had one hearing and, um, you know, I don't anticipate that this would change anything. You know, overall, we're, we're providing more compensatory storage with the addition of these, you know, areas for stormwater to be collected. Um, so we're actually lowering the, you know, the grade of the site. So I'm not too concerned that, you know, we're not gonna be able to meet the standards for compensatory storage. Um, all the other grades are the same or, or lower. So um, I think they're just waiting to hear your, your opinion. I was going to say, how, you're sloping how, down to the east, right? Uh, it slopes well. So there's a little bit of a bench right here. This eastern portion is probably three feet lower than okay. the rest of the site. Um, so we're not touching that other than adding some, you know, some trees, some native trees. Um, but everything else is up further on the existing developed portion of the site. How far is, the, Jeff, how far is the building off of the east boundary, roughly? Uh, let's see. Let me just switch my screens here. I apologize for this. Um, know if I've got the setback shown on here. You you did on the uh, prior screen because you were showing the setback for the uh, from the deck to the property line. So it's 41 feet to the corner of the deck. Corner of the deck, okay. right. Yep, here you go. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So you're you're okay. So you got a good 50 feet of property to the east side of the building. Yes. Okay. Just wondered. And the, the stair, is that is that being added to the existing footprint? It's being added to the side of the building, yes, over what is existing parking area, but yes. So would that require the, the, variance? It's funny that where, where the slab is, is just outside of the flood zone. Everything else, all the rest of the site is is within floodplain. It's, it's right at that elevation. So is the stairs... Now, next question, you're adding the stairs. Mm -hmm. Does that throw off your sideline right. setback? Because aren't you already existing non-compliant? Uh, that, yes. that, that would make you more non-compliant? Or is that a side yard? What's the, what's the front yard? Is the front yard north? No, the, the Bay Road side is not a side yard, Bill. That's a front yard. Yeah, I guess it is. So, uh, the front and front setback is fifty feet. Yeah, but okay. you're on. It's a corner lot, so you need the, to maintain the front setback from both sides. No, so, traditionally, didn't traditionally, Bill. We would offer them to the choice of what it is going to be the front yard. The zoning bylaw specific, if you have a corner lot with frontage on two streets, they shall both be treated as front yard setbacks. So he's an existing non-compliant. I, I don't think he's got 50 feet to the building. 
No, but right. he's adding, yeah. he's making it more non-conforming by adding the, the uh, stairway. <clears throat> right. Right. He could add this, he could add it on the east side, but on I don't- the back side, right. Right. Yes. Yeah, no, that's that's a very good point that I don't think anybody had picked up on. Yep. Well, sorry, I'm an artichoke. <laughs> so. good, good oh, yeah, no, that's... Dwyer. Yep. Didn't notice that. Yeah. That's why we have five of us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that'll need, that'll need a, an amendment. Yep. Is there, I was trying to think, is there any way to do some kind of uh, retention or detention on that east border or is it all, is it going to, what doesn't um, percolate will, will sheet flow onto the butter? Um, or again, is, is that not us? That's, that's CONCOM. Yeah, I mean, we're really, we're, we're, reducing the amount of runoff that goes to this area. Um, but this, there's, this, this rises up again to the Pride site further east. Okay. So, you know, if this were to ever flood, it would come out onto Bay Road before it would get up onto their, onto their property. Okay. That, that was something that came out to some people's surprise during the Pride uh, uh, development, because it turns out a lot of the work they were doing uh, people were surprised to see there all the clearing they were doing on that lot immediately to the east of this parcel, mm -hmm. but it turned out that much of it was actually outside Conservation Commission jurisdiction because it was slightly higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I mean, you, I, I agree with the other board members, Mr. Squire. You've done a real good job of trying to address traffic flow and stacking and stuff like that. And with a given the property, that's probably about, except for the minor change of the radiuses, that's about as good as we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Can you go back um, to the sheet that's more representational of the current design? Yes. Yeah. I know that one had had the setback, but. Right. Yeah. No, I apologize. Somehow these got split up, so I apologize. Okay. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I mean, it, we'd obviously have to relocate this stair. I'm thinking it may, you know, could potentially work back in this corner here or on this off this end of the building, even. Yeah, you might be close to 50 feet over there. Well, only, yeah. only if you're off to 50 feet. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to have to use your rear or side yard, whatever that yeah. east, east side is. Are we, uh, Mr. Chairman, are we up to voting or do we- Oh, no, no, we, we gotta- He needs to come back with- He's gonna come back amendments. with- he, 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 This was a, I don't wanna call it a conceptual drawing, but this was an idea drawn before they do all the, put the rest of the drainage and everything else that they wanted to see what we thought of this particular right. drawing on the screen in front of us right. um, yeah. before he gets too far into the other things. Okay. Right. So, um so my to-do list is coming out like this um you want to take a look at adjusting your parking mm -hmm. perhaps by designating some reserve parking or going for the transfer development rights route mm -hmm. um which would cost roughly ten thousand dollars to get a little less parking it seems it's probably not a great deal for to pay ten thousand dollars to get rid of 200 uh, square feet or whatever, right? You right, could probably, 92. You could probably um, widen your lanes by one foot all the way around the site and, and get right. it. Um, and we, you need to address the, uh, the fire lane issue with the fire chief in front of the, where you presently have about 12 feet for your service area. You need to get that out to 20 uh relocate the stairs out of the front yard setbacks on both sides mm -hmm. either a design change or decide to go for a variance mm -hmm. and of course then we need we need the final the final drawings uh, a, a, a full set of final drawings incorporating yes everything correct 
Um, Jeff, I shouldn't design out loud, but the the um, when you're when you're there getting your coffee that in that eleven and a half foot lane, mm -hmm. if you had to widen that by eight feet to get his twenty feet, could you do it in that grass area with your turf pave? And I, I don't know what you mean by that. I know I've seen in Europe where they have like the concrete pavers that mm -hmm. have openings and there's grass growing. You know, I, I think I went to the airport in Italy and they actually mow the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, something like that. There's a couple of different products, but that was the idea with this area here just to deter, you know, regular use and make it look, you know, more similar to the adjacent, you know, turf for grass. Okay. Yeah. That might be uh, somewhere where you, you could keep some, some uh, permeability, but still be able to carry their vehicles. Sure. Exactly. Okay. We actually did that at the rear of the courtyard by Marriott. We actually have a fire lane behind there. That's all, all that, that grass with the, uh, you know, the circles in the ground there. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Find a Marriott, okay. okay. Sorry, Bill, I think I interrupted you. Nope, that was, uh, that was, those are the, the four yep. points that I had there. I was just going to take a look at a calendar and suggest a, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming two, two weeks is too soon to come back, Mr. Squire? I don't think so, no, I mean, we this, you know, we were able to pull this together pretty quickly. So I think in the interest of time, it would be good to keep oh, so, moving if we can. So October 18th might be good for you? I think that should be fine. Okay, we'll put you on for the 13th. There's a continuation. We do have PVC, Pine you know, Valley Plan coming there that night, but I don't think this will take too long if you've got the items addressed. Okay. Because November 1st is the first Tuesday of November, but it's also election day. Mm. And we can't hold a public hearing on that day. Right. So if it isn't the 18th of October, the next day would be the 15th of November. Yep. So when's the fall town meeting? I, I have uh, November 8th as election day. Well, November 8th, I thought it was the first. Okay. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. I'm off. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then yes, I think you're right. I don't know why I put the first Tuesday. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, we still should be able to be, be able to make the 18th, so that should be fine if okay. that's okay with the board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, Jim. Uh, philosophical question: If let's say he did his whole driveway with those turf pave, could he count that as green no. space and as parking? No. <laughs> One or the other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff, I'm sure the Conservation Commission is going to be looking for elevation, so... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, now we've, we've got a pretty clear, clear diagram of, of the flood storage capacities, so we should be prepared. But thank you, yeah. Thank you, Jeff, for responding okay. to our, our concerns. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, this is a tough one. Do you do puzzle uh, picture puzzles? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I may tar start though because this has been a challenge for sure. Um, and the only other one, the only other topic I I don't know, and I don't know whether now is the right time is the garden center. Whether now is a good time. Last time the material was submitted too late, at least for the board to discuss. So I don't know whether now is the appropriate time or the what? The garden center, gardener supply. Oh yeah, okay. Hadley Garden Center. Yep. Yeah. yeah um, we, did con we, did, we did continue that one to today too, I believe. Well, and I think, yeah. So I think the, um, <clears throat> let's see, this one. Yep. Yeah. So um, yeah, at least based on my understanding, the board had agreed to waive site plan approval pending, you know, approval from um, reviewing engineer looking at stormwater primarily for the, for the 287 parcel. Um, and so there's been a little bit of back and forth with regards to access lanes and, and managing that stormwater. And what was forwarded last week was a letter from Bucky Sparkles 
noting that the um, that the plan, as you know, as shown here, which is an, uh, an update from the previous version, um, is a reduction in impervious even on the existing site. And so, just um, just so that the board is aware, what have we had shown previously is this this delivery loop in the back would come through, circulate through the back of the site. And the original plan showed an access aisle or an access road that would exit back out onto this easternmost curb cut. And that increased pavement area, particularly behind the building here, increased the, the size of this detention basin to the point where it really didn't make much sense. And so what we've done is we've eliminated that drive aisle turn this parking lot 90 degrees so that the delivery vehicles now will exit out the, the western curb cut, which is also being retained. We'll close the eastern one, um, but that will facilitate, you know, truck access out of the site. And this will remain, the 287 property will remain just as it did before as, a, as an employee, you know, parking area. Uh, there's a gated entrance. There's a little bit of additional pavement to finish out this portion of the parking lot. Um, but otherwise, it's it's a reduction in, in impervious for that portion of the site, which is what the um, which is what the reviewing engineer had had noted. So um, that's what, the um, that. Go, what go ahead. Were you put, what were you putting there, Jeff? Where where we currently park between Route Nine and the existing building? Is that is that going to be lawn? Is yes. Be pedestrian access there, like. This, so this area up here will be converted to lawn. But I mean, yeah. right in front of the building where people park currently. Right, right here. That'll be sidewalk. No, the main building. The oh, main out here. The this, garden this building. Will, this will be. This is going to remain as asphalt. It'll be outdoor display area. Oh, all right. They've got, they've, they're running new fencing across the front of the property. Um, you know, four foot high, sort of a, a nicer looking aluminum style fence rather than chain link or something like that but this is all going to be you know their their display retail display area is right here now they're trying to consolidate consolidate it so it's not spread out all over the site okay i was trying to figure out what your shading so your shading is the existing asphalt and that's remaining exactly but it will be display not a vehicular access Got it. right right they're gonna have a gated access you know along <laughs> along the western edge of the of this portion of the property. Okay. Okay. Is that new? Is that new pavement going back uh, off the west side of the existing garden building? It looks like a path going back here. No. Nope. Over uh, where it says load, you know, where your text is, loading platform, existing over here. No, so no, no, further west. Further west, right there, you were just on it. That this, what's that strip of shading? So they've got they've got a paved aisle down the center of their. Oh, is it actually paved? Area. I thought it was all gravel. Okay. Yeah, right. no, it's it's funny. I had to go out there two or three times to make sure that that was the case. Okay. But yeah, there is a paved aisle there. What's the address of this, Jeff? Address is two eighty five and two eighty seven, Russell. Okay. Right. Jim, uh, Chief Spankdable has his hand up. Yes, sir, Mr. Sp Chief. Mike, go ahead. You're on mute. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I haven't seen this plan yet. Will there be, uh, I'm just kind of curious if that's going to be all display. You're now taking away our fire access in the front of the building. Is Are we planning a different area for fire access now? So there is an emergency gate. There is a, you know, 18 foot wide gate here so that there is access, you know, vehicle access in emergency if, if necessary. Can okay, so we'll just turn? gonna make that, we gotta, um, so the NFPA standard now is, we just gotta meet that standard for the fire access and it should be clearly labeled around the building. Obviously, I think you have enough room if it's gonna stay the same way, but you were talking about displays and stuff. Is that, that gonna be in that driveway? Is that? I mean, it's it's very similar to what their current use is. They're just eliminating the parking out in front and vehicle access out in front. Okay, so there'll still be a clear pathway through the front of the building. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
Mr. Spanky, how wide does that clip pathway need to be? Does it need to be 20 feet or 30? It should, it should comply with the NFPA standard, the 20 feet. We should have that access in front of the building. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe this is almost 30 now. Yeah, it's definitely wide enough now. I'm just, um, yeah. even with the parking there. The, um, so the, I can't really see what the dotted line, but you have parking spaces where the old uh, daycare used to be. Oh, on this side, yes. Yeah, we used to have access on that side to both buildings as well. Will that now be eliminated or? You have, parking, uh, you have parking spaces that are all in this, in that, uh, on the northern end, right, right to the right as you come in that entrance there or that exit on the right. This, you're talking that here? Area. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's, I mean, there is parking there now. Um, this, this currently comes back to a dead end. Um, let's see. This is sort of, the, this is the current <laughs> configuration. So this comes back to a dead end lot back here and so what we're doing is providing a you know an access a through lane essentially that that allows you to you know circumnavigate nav navigate both sites so you can go through and exit you know either way but um so if we pull into the front of the building and use that access in front will we be able to continue forward and go back out onto route nine um i believe so i don't think they have any intentions of fencing this area here because that's so that open would, now. That is currently an yeah. open access for us. So that right. would be a pretty, we'd have to figure out. Uh, normally, we, we don't like having to, normally it's some sort of a hammerhead. I don't, I don't know what the side of that building is going to be, if it's going to be packed gravel where we could, you know, drive along that uh, eastern side of that structure and then mm -hmm. go out. I don't, I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I think. Most of this is compacted gravel and, and what is this, you know, sort of white area internal to the site now. Um, but we can certainly work with you to clarify, you know, access in and through the site. Mr. So, Sorry, do you have my email address or my contact info? It's on. I believe website. I do. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So I can, we can, I can, I'll touch base with you this week and we can, we can look at this. Thank you. Is that a 20 foot lane at the south? The one that sweeps by, yeah, I can't read that dimension because mm, yes, that's twenty feet. Yeah, that's and it's twenty feet when it comes by the parking over by the school. Over this side, yes. Where it's just twenty six spaces. That's that's a twenty foot lane. Okay. This is a twenty two foot wide lane. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So then, would it be wise to mark? say the last, the, the northernmost two spaces in that batch of 11 as uh, fire access, as a no parking zone, so that the truck, because you don't want the truck to come in, deal mm -hmm. with the building issue, and then find uh, employee cars blocking it at the other end, I would think. Perfect. Right, because it looks like you got handicapped parking at the west end of the front existing mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah where's that yeah where is this gate that you were talking about <laughs> so there's one here there oh yeah i don't think he'd be able to get his trucks through there yeah or at least i mean he could get through but he couldn't navigate between the buildings so one of, one of the things that we could do is take these couple of spaces here and move them to this side. Yeah, yeah. And leave leave in a an emergency access lane <clears throat> that, that would allow you to get all the way through. And I was looking at this, and what we would probably do is open this up here, so that we don't lose quite as many parking spaces. But then there could be an emergency lane that could exit mm -hmm. the site. Right. This is yeah. That's okay. we're assuming his trucks are coming eastbound. Yeah. yeah. And either that, way, I, they would have access into this, yeah. you know, into this. Right. <clears throat> right. Because when the when Amherst comes to uh, sure. to support the uh, Hadley, they're going to come from the other direction, so they'll right. be right. pulling the other way. You'll have yeah. them coming and going. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. I guess if you want to bring those back in two Perfect. weeks. 
yep. with those revisions, if that yep. works for everybody and make sure that you run them by the chief sure. in advance. It's anything from Mr. Quinlan on that, or is that not a building permit project? Everything looks good with me. Oh, thanks, Tommy. Looks good for at, his at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank at this you. level, of, at this level of detail, right? <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Anything else for Mr. Squire? All right. See you in two weeks, Jeff. Super. Thank you, everyone. Very good. Thank you. Thank you Jeff. Right. Take care. Uh, that was 285, 287. Correct. I have nothing else. Anybody have anything else? Uh, just a I question have... uh, to uh, Tom Quinlan. Uh, are you directing anyone who is looking for a building permit to go before the Conservation Commission or is that just some hearsay? No, we're not hearing you. You got to speak right into the center of your... I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. 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 So any, any permits to sign off for conservation? Yeah, I mean, in, you know, any building or whatever permit I do, Task it for a sign off. Okay. Okay, thank you. And, and Dee, Dee wanted to ask a quick question if you had a second for um, Domino's. Yeah, uh, Jim and Bill, I had sent you that quick yeah, he, flyer. He, he came. He and, did, okay. uh, yeah, you will, you will, you will be getting. Go ahead, Mr. Dwyer. Okay, we said that. Uh, we okayed it for 45 days and asked him to come back December 6th to either extend the signage or to have it down by then. He wanted okay, to, yeah. so we, we, he wanted we to have it up until uh, spring. Yeah, he wanted to have it up until the students graduate. <clears throat> yeah, correct. And I just wanted to make sure, so you're okay with all three of them? Yes, we're okay. we're okay. The, the motion is we've approved his signs, temporary signs for advertising for help um, until 12 6 22, at which time he'll come back to us and either try to extend it or take them down. Okay. Yeah, it was suggested that it wasn't advertising for the business. For business but, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it, everybody, I mean, not everybody. Almost all businesses are going through this hardship right now trying to find help. And to say you can't do it, yeah, I mean, technically it may not be quite legal. However, we're putting all these, the, 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 the DBA would be go crazy if we asked them to go off, to go off for a variance. Yeah. So we justified it under the temporary sign thing. And, and that's why, that's what I, I told him. I had said that, um, you know, I, we understand we want to help the businesses and everything, but originally he wanted it to like June. Yeah, and I def said, yeah. you definitely yeah. have to, you know, talk to the board about that. Yeah, because no. and, when, and we told him the same thing that, you know, we can approve a temporary one, but that's, that's a bit long. Duration. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So, okay. I just wanted to make sure then. So when he does come back to me for the sign, yeah, you'll be getting an email shortly on that. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Yes, speaking of uh, employment issues, if you know anybody who's looking for work, UMass and the five colleges are having another job fair this Thursday. Yeah. They're just like... I heard Mr. Zagradik's looking for a new part-time job for the winter. <laughs> Keep on smiling. <laughs> Blue Bonnet Diners stop serving breakfast on Mondays. They can't get the help. Yeah. I noticed stop and shop closes at 10 now instead of midnight that must have happened during COVID I missed that so yeah I don't think I have gone into a store that doesn't have a help wanted sign 
exactly right. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, just just drive down the highway on an interstate and look at. I mean, everybody looking for truck drivers, but when companies start advertising for help on the sides of trucks for for a warehouse help and other things, I mean, they're they're not just looking for truck drivers; they're looking for everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, minimum wage laws are irrelevant now. Everybody's paying more than minimum wage by quite a yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, okay. Anything else? I have nothing, Mr. Dwyer. You're all set. I'm all set. Okay, no. Motion to adjourn. Gonna pick me up. Please. Mike, I'm moved. Pick, pick you up. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Aye. And I'll Aye. second. Aye. Aye. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you. And thank you, Alex.